know, I don't see myself as a leader. I have said over and over in applications, uh, including the one for this place, I'll tell you one story about coming here, uh, for coming here, where I talk about it's, n it's not about the leader. It's about building leaderful teams. Now, it's like cloudization, which I'm not allowed to say, but um, building leaderful teams, it, it's not about... It's not about me as a it's about us. You know, we're, we work together and each of you is a leader. You just told me all the, every one of you has at least one thing that you're able to lead on. That's what it's about. So how do you get that out? How do you, um, how do we make sure that finds voice and that you complement each other and you do that work together? And then everybody shines and flourishes and everyone's, I feel like my um, career, for, if you want, to call it that, uh, I've not really. I don't see it so much as a career as a. Um, I just get up every morning and do something I love, and I, I keep getting to do other things. And even the stuff that's tough, I love to do it because, you know, I actually think it's a privilege to be the person who comes along to Melissa and says to Melissa, "I'm sorry, but I need to tell you that you've made a big mistake, and we need to work how we're going to work this out." I actually think that's the greatest privilege you can have, um, is to actually work with a colleague on the tough stuff, not only on the great stuff. And, and it's really hard to do that because I know you're going to be shattered and upset and, and all those other things. But the best I can do is give you the best respect personally I can find um, to enable you to either say, yeah, I totally messed this up and I need to run away and you know, do whatever, or maybe we can do this, or let's get some counsel, whatever. So I think it's a privilege to do that really hard stuff, I have to say. I, I don't like it. I'm scared, and it's, 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 it's really hard. It's really hard. But it's a privilege to be in the space where you get to do it. And for someone to trust you to do that is... Um, a great compliment, I think. And the greatest challenge is a very person. It's very personalised, and it's very personal, I suppose. It's the same challenge I faced as a teacher, and it's the person. Who, it's giving the best to the person who annoys you the most. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, you know, I, I actually think our work is not about us. It's about other. I, I keep saying that, and it's really hard. It's really hard when someone just either does the wrong thing consistently or you're constantly reminding them or um, they're big enough to get it and they won't or they behave like a prima donna or um, they won't, you know, they're not able to, yeah, all those things. And to, and to be able to, someone who just annoys you to death, to be able to go, how can I work with you to make things better for you? I actually think it's it's that personal relationship stuff that's always the hardest thing to. I'm getting published. Let's not go there. <laughs> Let's not go there. That's got to write something first for crying out loud. Um, so, uh, um, you get published when you least expect it. Uh, those of you who are academics in the year, you get research projects. You know, I, I remember teaching out at Melton and I was in a class and we'd written this wild proposal to government for hundreds of thousands of dollars and my colleague came and knocked on the door <laughs> and said and we got the grant and I went oh lord <laughs> what are we going to do now you know <laughs> we had no idea you know that overwhelming sense of and we literally were in panic mode for about two weeks while we thought my god they gave us money what are we going to do with this <laughs> So, you know, they're really good, hard things. They're good things, but they're huge challenges. It's delivering. Delivering on the promise, you know, is, is real for everyone. Uh, um, we've been in a lot of conversations lately about science and maths and how we get more of that going in schools. And uh, one of the stories, the analogies I've been using is around uh, for maths teachers and science teachers and scientists and, and mathematicians is goes back to my days as a phys ed educator. Oh, not less a phys ed teacher, but a phys ed educator. And I used to say to my phys edders, who were mostly elite athletes, women and men, very, very capable sports people, 
uh, who really wanted, what they really wanted to do was teach other elite athletes. And I used to say to them on day one, stay in this course if your goal in life is to get the really unfit, unhealthy kid to walk around the, the oval. If that's your goal, then you're in the right course. If it's about getting Olympic gold medals or winning the trophy at the end of the season, um, go away. Because that's training and that's AIS and that's another discipline. The work we do in universities, I think, is getting everyone access to the education they need and want. And in doing so, getting them access to the knowledge so that the research becomes absolutely fundamental. Building societies, Everyone who wants an education, I think, is entitled to have a go at it. You know, it's not about come and get what I've got. It's about what do you need and how do we help get you that. And I think it's the same with colleagues when we work in a team. So how do you build your colleague teams? And I've worked closely with a number of you here. And it's exactly what you do. It's about the educator who lets people learn from each other rather than... and. and I think that's the HR, I watch our HR colleagues, can I pay you a great compliment, who are stunning at that, who do that so well. They actually ask the hard questions and let you get all tangled around in it and then they come in calmly and say, well, I was thinking maybe we could do that. It's a brilliant skill. I'll, I'll often go into a bushfire to try and put it out. Um, even though I don't want to do that and I can't see how it's really going to help my career, but it, you think it, it does make for a better workplace and a, and a better environment. So I don't mind doing things that aren't necessarily strategic because you do learn from them anyway. Everything you do that you feel challenged in, you learn something. Uh, but I've also learned to seek advice. I think I have learned... Being a head of school was good at that, good for that, actually, apart from Linda yelling at me. Um, that was very good to seek advice before acting, even if it takes a day or two. And I've learned to uh, write things down, and I've, I've I've learned to write emails and not send them. I've learned to use my my drafts folder is my best friend. Your drafts folder in any position that you have is your best friend. Because often the first thing you think or the first response you have is not the best. And so just taking a moment to be the person you want to be, not the person you are, <laughs> you know, is good. And I, I think that's their lessons I learned as a head of school.